Welcome to our TGIFNS service tonight. I'm so glad we made it through another week. Amen. And I appreciate you turning in. We appreciate all of our online supporters. And, and man, we just appreciate all of our people. We're enjoying some beautiful weather down here in Florida. And I tell you what, it's been an absolutely beautiful day. In case you don't know, uh, we were blessed to finish up officially finish up hurricane season on November the 30th. And uh, that means we ought to have some uh, reprieve maybe for the next few months till next season. Amen. But uh, anyhow, those of you that do not know anything about Florida weather, we're getting ready to start into what we would call our dry season of the year. And we get most of our rain in the spring and in the summer and up in the hurricane season. And now we'll be going into a more drier season. So we're looking forward to that. But I hope you've had a great day and just glad that we made it to another Friday, made it through another work week. Wow, can you believe that? What a blessing that is. And here, hey, here's something that just shock, shock you right out of your socks. Can you believe it's only 23 days until Christmas? 23 days. Man, that's almost hard to believe. This year is just about over. And that means it's what, 29 days to January the 1st, 20. Wow, 2023. Won't that be something? Well, if you'd be so kind as to go ahead and like the program and share it out, uh, that would be great. We'd appreciate that. I appreciate those who have subscribed to our YouTube page this week and and uh, you've been using that. I appreciate that. Mike Worf Ministries. And um, we just appreciate you doing that. So let's finish the song and we will get right into the service. Thank you for being with us tonight. There's Miss Susan. Miss Diana, Miss Vivian, a thousand years. Woo, I couldn't praise him enough, could you? How about it? Woo! Happy early birthday to Lisa. When's Lisa's birthday? I must have missed that. And a plumber girl, how you doing? And somebody in church the other day that knows you. I'm 
talk to you, Miss Sanders. Tuesday. Thank you for that opening song, man. I love that. Don't you? He's been the best friend I have ever had. Let me give you a couple announcements tonight, kind of get us started out. So uh, kind of keep an ear open. We got our upcoming Christmas church dinner at church on December the 16th at 6 p.m. We're looking forward to that. Please sign up if you have not signed up so we know exactly how many people is going to be there. And then the Children's Church program will be on Sunday morning, uh, December the 18th at 10.30. They've been practicing on that. Man, got a great group of kids, about 20, well, I think about 20-some kids last week, maybe. And, uh, man, 22 or so, I don't know. But, uh, man, had a great group, and they're practicing up for the Christmas program that they will be putting on. And uh, hope that, uh, man, you, you'll come out, parents will come out, family will come out. And that will be great. Amen. And then Christmas Eve communion will be at 6 p.m. on the 24th. And, uh, man, we're looking forward to that. So I've got a lot of things going on. We're still taking up money for our kids, for the kids that come to our church that we want to help and try to be a blessing to. So pray about helping with that. Thank you for all those who have already given. But if you can help with that, that would be great. We would sure appreciate that. May God bless you. Got a revival coming up in February, man. It's going to be it's going to be here before you know it, February the 5th through the 8th with Evangelist Randy Perry and his wife Mary uh, will be singing. And man, I tell you what, we appreciate that. We're glad to see them coming our way. Also, I want to thank Pastor Brooks tonight for doing the program last Friday night. He was in Arkansas and did it with Pastor Paul, and man, they did a great job. It's great having those guys on, and I appreciate Pastor Brooks and Pastor Paul taking care of that last Friday night, Friday night after Thanksgiving. Uh, so let me just make a statement. I understand some people had some trouble with the podcast today. Uh, it kind of stopped abruptly, it seemed like, and some people said it stopped in the middle. And I apologize about that. I'm so sorry about that. You know how technology is. I don't know if it's my fault, their fault, your fault, the program's fault. I don't know whose fault it was, but I'll take the blame. I listened to Mondays uh, a little bit ago to see how it was going to turn out, and it seems to be fine. So hopefully it'll get out to you on Monday, and there will be no problems with that. So we appreciate you listening and sharing, and those of you that have let me know how things are going on. Well, what about a little R and R tonight, just to kind of get things started out? We haven't haven't done much R and R and for a while. And you say, "What is that? Rest and relaxation?" No, it's just a total opposite. It's called ranting and raving. And uh, I just want to rant for just a minute on one thing. Well, and I just want to say this: America continued on a downward spiral this past week with the passing when the Senate passed the Respect for Marriage Act. And it passed in the Senate, uh, 62 to 37. 62. Passed in, you know how many senators there are? There are 100 senators. So it passed in the Senate, 62 to 37. That means that 12 Republicans joined the nearly entire Democratic caucus on Tuesday to pass the Respect for Marriage Act. Wow, you say, well, what is the Respect for Marriage Act? It's offering federal protections for same-sex marriage and and, and uh, so on. But same-sex marriage would be the key part of that, probably. And, uh, you know, I, 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 <laughs> to, you know, one Democrat, two Republicans did not vote. And they say, now they say that it will not have any effect on churches or faith-based organizations. Well, We'll see how that goes. I don't, some people are counting it as a win for the Christians and for the churches and for conservatives. I don't understand that. I was reading an article today from a Christian uh, 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 publish, publisher, um, writer, and he thought it was a, it was a win for the, for the church and for Christians. And I, you know, I just don't see that. I don't see it as a win for the church. I see it as another loss for America and for Christians and for conservatism. Uh, it's just more, I tell you what it is, it's just more compromising with sin. 
and it just keeps telling us, I'll tell you what it keeps telling us, that the rapture of the church is imminent, that it could happen at any time, that it could happen soon. Amen? So praise the Lord. So just keep passing all these crazy laws and, and just condoning and compromising with sin because that means the rapture of the church is getting closer and closer. Amen? And remember, let me just, let me just say this to you. Listen, thank, remember, if you're a Christian, things are not falling apart. They're falling into place. So hold on. We may be about to fly. Amen. So we may be about to fly. Well, we got a couple birthdays tonight we want to talk about. And one is uh, evangelist preacher, Pastor Sebi Volpe. And Brother Sebi had a birthday today. And I say happy birthday to you, Mr. Sebi Volpe. And hope you've had a great day. And may God bless you and your wonderful, beautiful bride up yonder in the hills of Virginia. And then I just saw where Big John Huey said Lisa is having a birthday on Tuesday. So happy early birthday to you, Miss Lisa. And Big John, you know what that means? That means you better not forget her birthday. You, you know, Husbands can't forget that very many times and get away with it. So hopefully you won't forget that on Tuesday and you'll be real good to her. Take her out, buy her something nice, and take her out and get, get her a good dinner. Don't you make her cook on Tuesday for you. Amen? So anyhow, hope you have a great day Tuesday, Miss Lisa. Prayer request tonight. Let's get into some prayer requests. Uh, remember Jane Sims. Jane used to go to our church in, in uh, West Virginia, and Kathy and Jane worked together in uh, Elizabeth in Work County, West Virginia. Uh, rode together, and Jane, uh, her Remember Jane and her family. Her husband Gary uh, passed away this this week, and may God bless Jane and and Matt and Cabe. That's that, those are her two boys and the rest of their family. And then my friend John Hager is having cancer surgery on Tuesday, December the sixth. Colon cancer. Pray for John that everything go well with him, and they be able to correct that and there will not be any long-term effects from that. Glad to see Miss Nancy Whit on tonight. Miss Nancy's been vacant on the program, and we found out why she's been in the hospital. And bless your heart, Miss Nancy. Uh, we love you. We're praying for you, and just pray that God will bless you, and you'll get your health back. Nancy and her husband, Mike and Chad, her son lived up in the holler. We lived in the same holler. Now, those of you from the, you Flatlanders don't know anything about that, but if you're from West Virginia, up in that neck of the woods, you understand what a holler is. So, but Nancy and Mike and Chad lived up and they lived up in the head of the holler, and we lived in the mouth of the holler. You said, "What does that even mean?" Well, you just again, I'm talking a foreign language. I don't need an interpreter. Amen. And I see Susan Chapman asking me about where did you get that shirt? You like it, don't you? I tell you what, I wanted to wear that tonight. Make America godly again. And you know what? Maybe the major and Carla can answer that. They got that for me, and I don't know where they got it. I'm going to, I don't know, somewhere on the Internet, I'm going to assume. Maybe the major or Carla can answer that tonight. But uh, I like it, don't you? I think that's exactly what we need. Make America godly again. But anyhow, pray for Miss Nancy, and then pray for Denny and Sharon Toby. Uh, there are snowbirds that come down. They're not able to be down. They're both not doing well. And found out last night that uh, that Sharon is in the hospital. She is in the hospital. So pray for Sharon and Denny. Also pray for Ray Chastain. Uh, I was talking to my buddy today, Big D, Dennis Fish, and uh, one of the snowbirds were there was there with him, and his son had fallen uh, at work today at a Home Depot in Indiana. Ray Chastain and had broken his neck, and is going to have to have surgery. Man, that sounds very, very serious. So I prayed with I prayed with the dad, Roland, and with Big D over the phone, and pray for Roland and the family. Roland's down here. That's got to be got to be terrible, Roland down here, and uh, man, his son up there in Indiana. But pray for Ray that maybe they, they can correct that and take care of that, and God will bless them. Amen. But anyhow, there are snowbirds down at Mayberry RV Park. We got a lot of snowbirds in the area, man. The snowbirds have descended upon us. Amen. And then pray for Rosemary and Don Taylor. 
Uh, man, there's somebody else loving that shirt, man. Uh, Patty Vance has a virus, man. I, oh, I hate to hear that, Patty. God bless you and Curtis. So pray for Patty tonight with that virus. Uh, pray for Rosemary and Don. She started cancer treatment. She's got throat cancer. And then Don has had uh, the, the stroke and in rehab. Also pray for Pat Bailey. Pat's had uh, surgery. He's supposed to have surgery for a broken hip. Pray for her recovery. Little Bobby Batco needs prayers for his eyes. Uh, uh, his trip to Cleveland Clinic didn't help him. Also pray for our hurricane victims, Michelle and Abraham and those that are on tonight, those others, many, many that are in still suffering from the wake of Hurricane Ian. So pray for them. Pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the Ukraine. I wish you could see some of the posts that uh, we get in from Nina on there. Man, oh man, that's the little girl we, we support over in the Ukraine. What they're going through and, and man, the things that that they need and the, the way things are happening with that war on the Ukraine. Pray for them and Putin and Russia, Russia and all that's going on. Rosetta's husband is sick and he's prayer. Pray for Rosetta's husband, Craig, who's sick and he's prayer. Got a lot of people sick, got a lot of got a lot of flu and stuff going on up in the northern area. I don't know. I haven't heard much about it here, maybe a few cases, but uh, pray for everybody that's sick tonight. And then pray for our country. Can we do that tonight? That uh, God would bless us and help us. We need to stand strong. In the face of, a, of adversity, we need to stand strong. Amen. So let's pray. Lord, we're thankful tonight for your blessings. Thankful to be on the program again tonight on a Friday night. Thank you that we made it to the end of another work week. And Lord, we're still here. Our names are not on the uh, prayer list, and Lord, we give you the praise for that. I pray that you bless every person that's on and every person that will be on, every person that will hear later on, that God, it may be a blessing to them. Maybe someone that's not saved, that they may be saved before it's too late. Somebody's backslidden may come home, Lord, before uh, it's too late, and Lord, that the saints would be strengthened tonight. Lord, we pray. Lord, bless all these names that have been called out, all those on our main prayer list. So many people with sickness and trouble and heartache and disease and where death has come. And Lord, I pray that you bless each one of them. Lord, give them exactly what they stand in need of, Lord, we pray. And Lord, for this young man that has fallen today and broken his neck, Lord, I pray for him that you would help him with the surgery that, Lord, maybe it uh, it won't be as bad as it sounds. And Lord, for all these other names and situations, God, I pray that you bless them, the hurricane victims. I pray that you bless Nina and the people in Ukraine that are trying to survive. Lord, this onslaught from Putin, and Lord, bless them and help them, protect them, continue to send revival to them, and that people be able to provide their needs, Lord, through what you're doing for people. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, bless us tonight. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Nancy, what's the prayer for my sister-in-law? She's been in the hospital. Is that Jimmy's wife? Pray for Nancy's sister-in-law. Uh, I don't know if that's Jimmy's wife or on the other side of the family. I don't know. But God bless you. Well, we're going to play your song tonight. I, again, I hope you've had a great week. And uh, I was going to do a Christmas song tonight, but I don't think I am. I think I'm going to do, think I'm going to do something else tonight, something that I uh, hope will be a blessing to you. And I was listening to it a while ago. Let me see if I can find it now. As I, Oh, right here it is. I hope if you're saved that this is where you are and the way you feel tonight. I made up my mind. I love it, don't you? That's what Michelle and Abraham did. Week, a couple weeks ago, man, they made up their mind they were going to serve Jesus. That's Jimmy's wife, huh? I made up my mind. What was her name, Nancy? I'm going to live for Jesus. Made up my mind. Have you made up your mind? Made up my mind. I'm telling everywhere I go. I love it too, Miss Diana. No one could ever say that can keep his love away. I made up my mind. Yeah, they do. Because I lift up Jesus. 
just name But since he has saved my soul I ain't never been the same Ain't never been the same Get an amen off of that They don't know how good it feels Just to know God's love is real I made up my mind I made up my mind I'm gonna live for him Made up my mind. I'm gonna live for Jesus. I made up my mind. I'll tell it everywhere I go. There's nothing no one could ever say that can keep his love away. I made up my mind. I made up my mind. I'm going all the way. How about you? Go ahead and comment on the program, man. Get involved. Make a comment. That no one cares. Remember that Jesus, he will always be there. There's not a problem he can't solve or a trial he cannot dissolve. So put all your faith and trust in him and watch that valley just start to grow dim. Just make up your mind I'm gonna live for Him I made up my mind I'm gonna live for Jesus Eddie Walker I made up my mind Make America great Make America God is what we need play one, but I think if I can find this one, I'm going to play two tonight. I started to play this one, and I thought, well, so many people are going through troubles and heartaches and, and problems, and I, I thought about playing this one, but then I went with that one because I like that one. But I'm going to play this one here. Can I play another one tonight? And I think you'll like this. If you've been going through deep waters and tough time, and, and man, you're just uh, you're feeling a little bit down and out maybe, man, listen, lift up your head. Because, man, Jesus loves you. And just make up your mind. You're going to serve him. Listen to this song. Don't let the battle steal your praise. Man, that's that's what the, that's what Satan will do if you let him. Don't let him do it. I like this. I like this. Hey, Connie. 
going, girl? I've been seeing you on some. Good having you on. I love that. Don't let the battle steal your praise. Well, I want to say one more thing before we get into the sermon, and I'm glad that Mr. Daniel Jenkins and Beth and them have made it onto the program tonight because I wanted to share this, that their daughter, their youngest daughter, Lydia, was saved yesterday evening, gave her heart to the Lord. And oh man, that just... Man, that just does something to me, amen? And uh, what a blessing that was when Daniel sent me the message that she had been saved. And, and I, told, I told him that, that uh, I don't know if he realized it. You know, he got, he got saved, rededicated in Beth a couple of years ago on the program. And then his, two of his kids got saved. And, and then, then uh, the other boy got saved a couple of weeks ago. And then this is his last child, four children, and all four of them. Man, I cannot tell you. Wow. What a blessing to know that Daniel saved, that Beth is saved, that all four of his children are saved. And man, I'm going to tell you what a blessing, knowing they will be in eternity in heaven together. And I tell you what, man, I am just so tickled that the Daniel and Beth and that family are just on fire for the man. Wow, that's emotional, man. That's exciting. And, and uh, I'm going to say about Lydia, like I said about Wyatt the other day, that happens. That happens because mom and dad are serving the Lord. And uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a testament to you guys serving the Lord and putting Jesus first in your life and seeing the change that's happened and leading them in the right way. And man, I am... I wish I could get up there just to hug your neck. You tell little Miss Lydia, if she's watching, that the preacher loves her, and I'm so proud of her and all of your children. And uh, Daniel and Beth, God bless you, man. What God has done in your life in the last two years is, is it's not unbelievable, but man, it is a blessing what God has done. And man, I pray that, I pray you just keep on, keep on, keeping on, and that God will continue to bless you and, and that that ministry, your gospel, your serving the Lord will just continue to roll out on other people and other people in your family that may not be saved would be saved. So man, I just I'm I'm proud of you, son. I want you to know that you and Beth and those four kids, I, like I said, I wish I was there just out of I'd get y'all, just hug y'all right in a big group hug right there tonight. Amen. So I just wanted to share that tonight. I'm glad you hopped on, got back in and got to see that because I wanted to talk about that. Amen. All right. I talked Wednesday night and I preached on this subject. Jesus's birth was special. And man, I, I mean, man, I got cranked up on that. If you didn't hear it, go to the Facebook and, and watch it or go to YouTube channel and pick it up. Share it with somebody, man, because Jesus's birth is special. It was special. And man, we need to realize that as we come into this time of the year, I'm thinking about, again, I'm thinking about what our, our uh, the House did, what the Senate did with passing that that marriage law and, and man, all the crazy things that are going on, the war, they can say there's not, there's a war against Christianity. There's a hatred against Christianity. There's an agenda against Christianity. The Antichrist uh, uh, is already, his, his, the spirit of Antichrist is moving throughout the world. Satan is alive and well. And I'm going to tell you what, man, I'm going to tell you what, 
Everybody's against Christians. Everybody's against Christmas. Now listen, people don't listen. People don't care much if you talk about the babe in a manger. That may not shake them up. But when you talk about Jesus grew up and he lived a sinless life and he died on the cross of Calvary and he rose again the third day and he ascended back to heaven and he's coming back someday. And man, I'm going to tell you when he was here, he called out sin and he called sin what it was and he called people to repent and for people to be saved and you start talking about that Jesus that wants a change in your life, then people get upset about it. Amen. But I'm going to say this is a special time of the year. I told him, I told him Wednesday night, I said, listen, if you don't like Christmas, keep it to yourself. Amen. That because I like it. And, and, and as I said, maybe you don't like the holiday, but you ought to like the holy day, because Christmas is a holy day. And man, I tell you, I love it. I got my book in. Almost, I got my book. I told you, look at what came in. I think I'm going to use that with the children's church. May use it in the sermon. I preached a couple sermons on, on this right here. And uh, man, I love that. There's a, there's a great Christmas message because this guy, the Scrooge, hated Christmas. That reminds you of anybody in the Bible. There are a lot of people in the Bible seem to hate Christmas. There are a lot of people today that hate Christmas. In fact, I, I quoted some of it. I didn't quite read some of it, not out of the book, but I had some of it written down Wednesday night. L l listen to it. Like, can I read it to you again? I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen to what it said. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. I should have lived in Whoville. What about you? But the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one inquired the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. And that's exactly what's wrong with people today, man. Their hearts are too small. They need to let Jesus come in. They need an enlarged heart. They need a heart transplant. They need to let the Spirit of God come in and the love of God come in and Jesus come in and give you a brand new heart. That's what's happened to Daniel and Beth. That's what's happened to all their kids. Man, they've got a heart transplant. We that have been saved have had a heart transplant. And that's what was wrong with the the Grinch, man, his heart was two sizes too small. And we've got a lot of people today, liberals and modernists and the sin-laden society that still goes on about the government and the ACLU and all that stuff, man, that's turned a war on Christmas. Their hearts are just two sizes too small. I said Wednesday night, I'm determined that I'm going to keep Jesus' birth special in my heart and in my life because I know what Christmas is all about. It's not about it's not about everything that we think it is. It's about the birth of the Savior. Man, if you can if you can grasp that thought tonight, that Christmas is not about presents and bows and packages and boxes and bags and food and, and gifts and trees and lights and Rudolph and Frosty and, and Santa and all those things that have fallen into the into the Christmas story. It's all about Jesus Christ. And man, listen, you would be well on your way to being blessed. You say, well, I'm depressed and I'm discouraged. Well, listen, a lot of people are, but I tell you what you do. Listen, get, let Jesus enlarge your heart. Let him give you a new heart. And if you're saved and you've been discouraged and maybe you've been more like the old a Grinch. Maybe you need. Maybe you just need to find out and just get reacquainted with Jesus again, man, and find out that there are some special things about Jesus's birth. Let me finish up with this right here and say, here's another part of the story. It says, and the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little 
bit more. And I want to say tonight, Christmas means a whole lot more than what most people put into it. The Grinch finally got it. Have you? If you haven't, will you? So let me give you some things tonight about the birth of Jesus, how they were special. Number one, I preached on on Wednesday night that Jesus' birth was a special pronouncement. A pronouncement is a formal or authoritative announcement or declaration. And when the angel came and pronounced to, to Mary, the Virgin Mary, that she was going to have a child and it would be God himself, Emmanuel, God with us. Man, that is a pronouncement. That's, that's, that's bigger than just an announcement. That is an authoritative, uh, authoritative announcement. How can you get much more authoritative than the angel Gabriel who stands ready, who stands at the throne of God, waiting to take God's message to people. He took it to Daniel. He took it to Zechariah, John the Baptist's dad. And then he took the message to Mary there as the Virgin Mary and told her that that holy thing that would be born in you would be born the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. And I say, as I say, you know, the Bible says, listen to Luke one twenty six. Begin reading, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in and, and, and into her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women." And then it goes right on down and just finishes up those verses right there. And that's what I preached on. And the end of verse 35 says, And that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Wow, what a special pronouncement. Then I preached on Wednesday night that Jesus' birth would be to special parents. His mother, Mary, and again, the Bible said in Isaiah seven fourteen, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and, and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Listen, I want you to know if your version of the Bible doesn't say virgin, get you another version, get you a KJV, amen? So Jesus was born to special parents. He was born to the Virgin Mary, as I'm, I'm talking about on the podcast, as I keep saying, if Mary wasn't a virgin, people, they say, well, I'm discounting the virgin birth. I don't believe the virgin birth. I don't believe that's as important as you're making it out to be. Listen, it is, a, it is a bedrock doctrine. It is a cardinal doctrine. It is a fundamental doctrine. It is foundational truth that Jesus Christ had to be born of a virgin. As I said Wednesday night, the, the baby gets the blood from the father. And if he had been born through normal conception, through human means, he would have had the blood of a sinful man in him. But he was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost of God. And God himself came down and placed himself in the womb behind the veil, behind that veil, at that veil, that covering of her uterus. Man, I want to tell you, Jesus was behind the veil and came out. I need to preach on that. Jesus' birth was to special parents, and then his father was God. Joseph was his stepdad. Jo Joseph raised him, but his father was God Almighty. And then his stepfather was a good man who wanted to put Mary away privately, but his head said stoner, but his heart said, man, listen, I don't want to do that. I'm going to put her away privately. And then and then the angel, and then in the dream, God appeared to him and said, don't be afraid. Take her. Take her. Fear not, Joseph because she's carrying the Son of God. Think about that. And Joseph believed that. So he was born, Jesus was born to special parents. And then I really got cranked up on Jesus' birth would be in a special place. And the Bible tells us exactly where Micah said it'd be in Bethlehem of Ephratah and Micah 5, 2. And then Micah 4, 8 even says, and thou, O tower of the flock, tells us probably exactly where Jesus was born, and listen, we we've talked about and, and you know we've taught, we preached for years, but as we've continued to read and study, and and we've read the writings of some of the old rabbinical writings of of the rabbis' writings that they knew about all this, we understand that as Micah said, the tower of the flock would be the place where all the 
priestly lambs would be born, the perfect lambs, where they would be born and be kept until the time of the sacrifice in the temple. So these shepherds were not just shepherds. They were not just outcasts. They were not the scum of the earth. They were not the low life of the community. They were not just ceremonially unclean. Uh, uh, ceremonially unclean. They were Levitical shepherds who had the charge of keeping the shepherds who were born, the sheep that were born that would be slain and they were born in the tower of the flock. They were born in that little manger and they placed them there and wrapped them in swaddling clothes and placed them in a manger and checked them out and watched them. That was the very place that Jesus was born. I believe that. Nothing was left to chance. God is a God of sovereignty. God is a God of that is supreme. God is a God that's all knowing. And I don't believe, I don't, I don't believe for a minute. Now you can believe what you want to believe. I don't believe for a minute that God let the birth of his son happen by happen chance. I believe he knew exactly where it was because when you think about that, listen, let me read you these verses, Luke 2, 8. And I, and I preached on this Wednesday night and I probably shouldn't be taking this much time on it, but I love this part of the story. Luke 2, 8 says, and there were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were so afraid. We've always wondered, why did God send angels to the shepherds? I think now we know. I think now we know. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse number 12, here it is. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. That's what they did to those sacrificial lambs when they were born and they were putting them up. They were checking, they would wrap them in swaddling clothes, place them in a manger, check to make sure that they were a perfect lamb without spot, without blemish, and placed in that manger, and they would be there, and then they'd be raised and be in a protected place in an area that would, that, listen, it was clean. It was ceremonial clean. I mean, it was a place where the shepherds knew exactly where that birthing place was. When the, when the angel said unto them, here's your sign. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. They knew exactly where that place was. And the Bible says, and, and it came to pass in verse 15, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go now, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And verse 16 says, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it so special that the Lamb of God, Jesus was the Lamb of God. Remember when he came on the scene, John the Baptist was baptized in there in the Jordan and he looked at Jesus and what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is known as the Lamb of God. Every one of those thousands and millions of lambs that had been slain, that had been birthed, that had been watched, that had been put up, that had been wrapped in swaddling clothes, that had been laid in a manger, every one of those typified the Lord Jesus. And man, when that angel told them, this is where you'll find him. Here's going to be your sign. Here's your sign. He's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. They didn't hunt all night. They didn't look all night. They knew exactly where to go, to the tower of the flock, and there they found the baby Jesus. Well, I don't believe it was coincidence, and then that's what I preached on Wednesday night. Tonight, I want to give you the last two points to that sermon, and it's almost time to go, but the last two points of that sermon, point number four was Jesus. Jesus' birth would be a special person. He was not just a human being. He was God in the flesh. He was the Son of God. He was the Son of Man. He was the God-man, 100% God and 100% man. Isaiah 9, 6 said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. There's his humanity and there's his divinity. Don't try to rob him of either one. He was 100% divine and 100% human. He was the God-man. No wonder that Jesus' birth would be a special person. He was the God-man. For unto us a child is born. That's the humanity sign. Unto us a son is given. That's the divinity sign. And the government 
shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Man, I want to tell you that Jesus was born a special person. Man, what what a birth that was when God himself took upon himself human flesh and came down and entered into the world through the womb of the Virgin Mary and appeared as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And there he was, God himself lying in a manger. What a birth. What a person. What a special birth. What a special person. Nobody has ever been been born like Jesus. Nobody will ever be born like Jesus. There was one Son of God, one only begotten Son of God, and he came through the Virgin Mary. It will never be repeated. It is a special birth to a special person. Amen? The God-man, the 100% God, 100% man. And then I want to say point number five and close with this. Jesus' birth would be for a special purpose. You say, why did Jesus come? Well, the Bible says in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus' birth would be for a special purpose, and it was to save sinners. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Don't you think, by the way, that we as Christians ought to be doing the same thing, trying to get people saved, trying to tell people about Jesus, trying to share the gospel story with them? He came to save sinners. He came to do his father's business. Man, listen, when you think about that, man, listen, remember when Mary and Joseph found him, they had lost him there at 12 years old, and they come back to him and found him in the temple, and he was teaching, he was there teaching them, man, those scribes and Pharisees and lawyers of the law, doctors of the law, sitting there asking him questions, and as a 12-year-old boy, he was sitting there answering them and talking to them, and Mary and Joseph were upset, they had lost him, and they came back and said, man, oh man, and Jesus said, Wish you not, don't you know that I should be that I was about my father's business? Don't you think that you and I ought to be about the father's business? Wow. He came to seek and to save that which was lost, and he came to do his father's business. Do you realize if Jesus had not come God came down to us because we could not get to him? Listen. We got this strange fire and this crazy teaching that we're little gods and, you know, that if we, that if we uh, can do so much and be so good and get so holy that we'll become a little god, we're, n we're never going to become, we'll never be a little god. There is one God, and he consists in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and God the Son came down because we could not get to him. We could not get up to him. He came down to reach down to us. Man, think about that. That ought to put you on shouting ground that when I could not get to him, when I could not go to him, what's the song said? He came to me. Do you remember the night? Do you remember the time? Do you remember the day? Remember the time when Jesus came to you? Listen, he comes to all of us. And man, I'm so glad that I got saved. I'm so glad that I know what Christmas is all about. I'm glad that I know that Jesus didn't just come to be born in a manger, but he came to die on the cross of Calvary and pay a sin debt and redeem me back so that I could be saved. If I would just open my heart up and accept that. Wow. What a blessing that Jesus' birth would be for a special purpose, to save sinners, to save sinners. Man, we can only be saved through and by the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're just, listen, i tell you what we are. We don't deserve anything. The Bible says all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Man, there is nothing good in me. There ain't nothing good. I'm going to hurt your feelings. There ain't nothing good in you. The only thing good that we can say is thank God Jesus saved us and the Holy Ghost of God came down to live in our soul and to take up residency in our heart and to make us a child of God that we could be born into the family of God, into the kingdom of God. I want to tell you, man, you talking about 
about a savior. You talking about somebody that came and died. Jesus Christ did that so you and I could be saved. What a savior. Amen. What a savior. So his Jesus' birth was for a special purpose. Man, if, it, if he hadn't come that way, if he hadn't come through the Virgin Mary, if he hadn't lived a sinless life, if he hadn't died on the cross at Calvary, his blood had to be shed. It was not his good life that saved us. It was the shedding of his pure, precious blood that paid the sin debt. There, listen, God said, listen, it had to be a blood sacrifice. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Yes, he was born of a virgin. Yes, he lived a sinless life, but he died as the savior of the world and shed his precious, pure blood that you and I could be saved. Man, he had to die from the cradle to the cross, to the crown. Think about that. From the, he came to the cradle, he went to the cross, and he's coming back with the crown. Well, that's about to put me on shouting ground. That's about to make me feel about like R-B-A-P. Just rear back and preach. I'm going to tell you what, when you think about it, he came through that cradle. He came to the cross, but he's coming back with the crown up on his head. And man, I want to tell you what, with his vesture dipped in blood and the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on him, I'm going to tell you what, he's coming back to rule and rain. So hang on, honey. Don't you be discouraged. Don't you be defeated. Don't you be disillusioned with all the craziness in the world. I'm going to tell you, our God is special. Amen. Our God is special. And man, I'm going to tell you what, he came for a special purpose, to seek and to save that which was lost. I tell you what he said, I'm, I'm so glad he found me. Woo, people say, I found the Lord. I tell you what, listen, really, that's a, that's a misstatement. Really, the Lord found us, amen? I mean, the Lord knew exactly where we were. He knew exactly all about us. And man, listen, I couldn't get to him. He came to me. He found me. We say, I found the Lord, really. The reason we say that is because the Lord found us, amen? So think about those five points tonight. I hope you got something out of that as we start into December and into, into the Christmas season. And I love preaching on Christmas thoughts. So yes, I want to say tonight, the birth of Jesus was special in so many ways. And I hope tonight that if you've never experienced the specialness, I said Wednesday night, I don't know if that's a word or not, but if it's not, I'm going to make it one. If you've never experienced the specialness of Jesus's birth, Man, listen, I would ask you tonight that you would be saved tonight or that you you say, well, I'm cold and I'm backslidden. I'm not where I ought to be. Then you ought to come back to Jesus tonight, man, because of the specialness of Jesus's birth. And it was for you and for me personally. Amen. So I want to say to you tonight, if you've never been saved, you want to be saved tonight, this is what you got to do. I'm going to make it real easy for you. I'm going to give it to you real easy biblically. You just got to know you're a sinner. Pray a prayer, something like this. Dear God, I know I cannot save myself, but Lord, I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to be saved. And tonight, the best I know how, I'm asking Jesus to save me. And I'm trusting him to save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it and you asked Jesus to come into your heart, would you put your name on the screen and say, hey, I got saved. If you're away from the Lord, you're cold, you're backslidden, you ought to come on back to Jesus tonight and just pray and come back and put your name on the screen and say, hey, I've come home. I've returned back to the Father's house. Amen. Listen, you'll have the best Christmas you could ever have. Amen. And then if you're maybe a Christian, maybe you may make some decisions. Maybe tonight be at the time that you need to make some decisions for the Lord on how you're living your Christian life. Maybe you ought to do that tonight. So here we go. Closing out. If you did that, put your name on the screen and let us know. Well, I started climbing up this mountain a few years ago. How about it? 
If you don't know Jesus, would you come to him tonight? Would you just open up your heart and ask Jesus to come in? Listen, he came into the world. He came into the Virgin Mary. He came into the manger. He wants to come into your heart. He wants to come into your heart. That's why he came. Man, Satan has got you blinded. The devil's telling you a bunch of lies. That's why he came. Is to come into your heart and save you. Man, listen, you need the Lord in your life. Don't let another day go by. Don't let another opportunity go by. You ought to pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart right now. Right now. If you're away from the Lord, you need to come home right now. Do it tonight. Do it right now. Do it tonight. Get this December started out the right way, man. Get in. You talk about getting into the Christmas spirit. Woo! That'll put you on shouting ground. His Holy Spirit feels up in my soul. Heaven's How about it? Would you come to Jesus tonight? Come on home to Jesus tonight. Man, that's why he came to seek and to save lost people. He wants you to be saved, but you have to open up your heart. That's where I belong. How about it? You ought to come tonight, man. Share this message with somebody. Share with somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. Man, share the gospel during December. We talk about the birth of Jesus, man. Let's share the gospel. Heaven's my home. I'm moving up. I'm moving on. God bless you. Thank you for being on tonight, man. We appreciate you. Hold your head up, man. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. You're going to make it there one day, man. I'm going to tell you what. Keep serving the Lord. Join us Sunday morning at 1030, either live or on Facebook. Uh, here in, in, in the auditorium or on Facebook Live. And if you don't have a church to go to, we'd be glad to glad to let you join us on Facebook Live or in the auditorium with us. Have a great weekend. If you need something, let us know. We love you. God bless you. Amen.